Please, I've told you we don't have any. Now you have to see the truth. You still think we're lying? We have nothing to give. Liar! The captain thrusts his sword into the elf. No, rip! Oh, he's just... Oh, no. Oh, bummer. Disgraced. RPG. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, Feudal Japan RPG. Classic stuff, mate. Nice, We're talking mate. Sword of Vermilion. Retro. I knew you was going to say Sword of Vermilion. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a Mario, uh, like, not Mario, like a Mega Drive style RPG. So we're going to jump in and I'm playing this one, so it should be good. Cool, mate. I hope so. I haven't cool. RPG-G'd for a while. RPG-G'd. Yeah, I'm all about that MMO, not so much the RPG-G. So, let's go. <laughs> Select character. Disgraced, so mate. You were a disgrace. <laughs> You're a disgrace. You were a disgrace. <laughs> You're a disgrace. So I saw nothing of this pre you playing it until yeah. I started to see it on the screen. It kind of gave me the feel of like an old school Zelda original Final Fantasy type RPG vibe. So how was it? Yeah, it's uh, RPG Maker. Um, you were in feudal Japan, and nice. I totally want to do an accent. Don't do that, I won't mate. do an accent, Don't but you're in feudal that, Japan. You're drawing naifus and wakazashis all over this motherfucker. Uh, the story setting is pretty, it's pretty atypical. It's yeah. pretty atypical RPG stuff. There's a big bad guy who's come to Japan, Japan, and he's a bastard. He's a big bastard, <laughs> and now you're going to uprising all over this bitch. So in RPG fashion, you're going to start from rags to riches. You're, uh, you're going to be... You're the building. rebellion. You're going to be drawn into the rebellion, and then I have no doubt at some point you are the god amongst men who is crushing the souls of all those beneath you as you take it to the big bad at the end of the game. So you're like That's a Japanese doing. Katniss, mate. Yeah, you're overturning the shit house. Nice, yeah, cool. You're going to come right up to him. So your story is that. It's the as with any RPG, it's kind of like the story of an adventure. Yeah, uh, it's absolutely. It's like, this is going wrong all over the world. Deal with it, bro, and off you go anyway. <laughs> uh, so don't expect to be like, it's not Chrono Trigger. It's not like, what? No. <laughs> it's not Final Fantasy. It's, okay. uh, it's pretty standard. Cool. Okay, so let's just get into the gameplay then. How did you find that? Because you don't play a lot of these titles traditionally, do you? Which is weird considering my MMORPG I know, right? Table. But yeah, um, I'd loved to do the RPGs for a long time. This game reminded me very much of an old Mega Drive game that I completed a few times called Sword of Vermilion. I'm sick of that. hearing about that game it's from you of your past. RPG. Every you. time we bring up a Mega Drive, you know, Sword of Vermilion, you it's play Sword of Vermilion. Game. And Moonwalker, oh mate. Don't call Moonwalker! <laughs> Save them chim Shit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's got some kinks. It's got some kinks. There's no controller support, which I found really weird, considering what? it seems to be clearly designed to be played with a controller. Uh, but I couldn't get it to work. Um, the mouse on the screen moves at, like, rocket speed. <laughs> it's, it's so weird. It just moves so goddamn fast all the time. And you can't change the speed without, like, editing some files. Nice. Uh, not only that, though, the mouse pointer has a tendency to just disappear. <laughs> Really? Yeah. What, just, just not off your screen, just vanishes? It, yeah, it just flat out disappears. And it just doesn't come back for ages. <laughs> and sometimes it comes back and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, but and honestly, none of that really matters. None of that really matters. The game is designed to be played with your left hand on the keyboard. You can do absolutely everything with uh, WASD and a spacebar. Okay. Uh, which is fine. It's not about, like, this isn't, like, spam the buttons game. No. You know what I mean? It's not spam the buttons Move and game. select. Yeah, so it's got some of the cool things. Like, you do get a team. So you've got your little squad that you have to build. You have to recruit them. Nice. And you'll find them. You can't change the fucking names, man. That's probably for the best. No, it's not. No, no way, not. man. No, I get it. Sometimes that really works. So Baller's Gate is something it brought up a lot on stream while we were oh, playing Baller's it. Where you got Because those names become then his, historically tied to yes. the game. So you yes. wins or whatever. Uh, but I wanted to change names, which I consider a tragedy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but you, uh, it's all about building this proper team. You have a huge amount of stats and different things that you can level everybody into. For mm -hmm. everything from influence and how you affect people around you to your command skills to your combat skills. So you are going to be... Oh, so I've got a nice little level of depth then as well. I would imagine that if you can get through... If you're into this, you're going to actually spend a lot of time maybe even replaying it just to do different builds for the entire oh, game. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I imagine so. I'm going to show you... I'm going to talk about a few of the things that you can do to actually overall affect things. But you are going to... You're flat out told to. You need to gear people to a specific job. Yeah. So if you want to get a tank and arranged, or do you want to be... And it's set in feudal Japan, so it's summarized and all that. So you have Ronins... 
everyone's you know you can wield the samurai swords you can get that classical armor and all that kind of stuff and they do have a visual aspect to it which is nice cool but you are going to have to build out your like specific team what i didn't see was anybody being like uh, different personalities so like chaotic neutral or anything like that oh okay you didn't yeah, think so, that level of character yeah unlikely nice. to see somebody like, walking off because you recruited a nice guy you know yeah. shit like that uh but you start out you can have three people in your party you'll get them within the first hour or so but that will change later on without jumping too far ahead <laughs> Uh, the combat system in the game is decent enough if you play Final Fantasy 7 or Final Fantasies in general you'll generally get the idea it's yeah. turn based you'll assign each person to do a specific thing you've got combinations of morale points and tactical points and you're going to use them to like pick different attacks so like right. you might get like a very vicious combo that's going to cost you like five tactical points so you're not going to be able to like spam that back to back oh, okay. you've got your standard attacks and all that you can use potions in combat you can put up defenses in combat you can do all the usual shit you'd explain so your tactical so. points are kind of like your mana bar if you like yeah they have something it's blue and it's called MP right but it's not it's morale points <laughs> it's, it's not magic points. Points. Yeah, it's not it's not unfortunately uh, they've called it morale points uh, but that's just the way they've gone with it so yeah it's just the same thing but there you go there's no magic in the game that I saw though good mate because mm. it's realistic yeah it's realistic feudal Japan get it together <laughs> it's, get it, there's no magic in Japan it's stupid <laughs> it's big trouble in little China lied to me are the dragons mate oh, it was China obviously uh, no no dragons oh that I saw God. you're going to be you're going to be fighting bandits and obviously the imperial army that cool so it's got that level of like no mystic no yeah, magic yeah no there is there is no uh, ethereal beings I like be that that's around. different man especially in yeah, an it's RPG a I think a lot of people expect it of RPG so whether or not that'll be like, well, I don't want to. I like playing mages. That might instantly turn you off from this yeah. game, right? You do get a selection <laughs> of classes and stuff to play, though. That cool. Uh, the actual character creation is reasonably extensive, uh, almost similar in a Fallout kind of way, where oh, you really? pick a trait that'll give you a variety of different stats. So oh, it's that's more cool. like defining your personality more than anything. Like, did you come from an aristocratic background, so you might have slightly more money but less experience, or were you from the streets, the ghetto? Mate? Oh, so these define your yeah your stats, stats and your yeah. your passives, if you like. Exactly, that's what you're going to be pick up there. Uh, one thing that is missing, though, that I was really waiting for is it doesn't really do anything mega. And again, it might be coming down to that realism factor they were kind of looking for, so you're not going to get any limit breaks where, like, a meteor crashes out of the sky or anything like that. <laughs> uh, there's very little animations in terms of combat itself. Yeah. So visually, not so much. You're okay. kind of waiting for something cool to happen in the combat, and it never really does. It's like pen and paper kind of combat with Pretty the dice. Pretty much, yeah. You're talking D&D, roll the dice. And yeah. roll the dice is a fucking thing. So in order to make the stats important, obviously you start off weak. So you miss a lot until you gain accuracy by gearing yourself and talenting that way. Right. Adding other things to the game that will actually increase your hit chance so you'll miss a lot and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, and you'll crit and crits are in there. You can also have poison damage, you can have shock damage, you can have bleed damage. All these different sources of damage that will affect it. But you cool. will get that sort of really annoying moment where you smack a guy. You'll have three in your team. You'll send two of them to kill one guy and then one to start work on the next one and both of them miss and this one guy still stands up. So you're going to get them like, <laughs> yeah. But it does have like a Pokemon style system for the enemies. Oh, where you'll okay. be wondering, you have like a, a world map where you're visiting city to city and it looks very small, but it's actually supposed to represent a huge area of Japan. Right. So uh, moving one tile might be moving several miles is the kind of idea it's giving you. So yeah. exploring the corners of the map is going to unveil unveil extra areas like a rebel camp that might aid your cause in that area okay. you might stumble across a graveyard where there's grave robbers you can get some extra loot all that kind of thing is going to be like this bit of exploration so there's a nice bit of variety in scenery yeah as it's well. not just a case of, of get quest go here to get quest done go yeah. back turn quest in. nice there's open a lot world addition around. to it as well yeah and they've added in that it's dangerous to do that as well so you have to pick and choose when you're doing that because your guys don't recover hit points outside of combat oh. you will get tired they'll get hungry they'll get thirsty so you're going to want to occasionally return to a town or a base and sleep you know like you'd sleep like in an inn in the old school RPGs regenerate some HP regenerate some mana sell your goods and continue on your sort of yeah. exploration journey um <clears throat> The interesting thing, though, the thing that's kind of separating it a little bit from the normal... Everything we've announced, said so far, has been pretty normal RPG stuff. Pretty, yeah, standard is stuff. Is base building. Base really? Building is, yes, base building is a game. as Because you, you're gaining favour in the air and you're taking over cities and stuff. You then start construction in those buildings. Now, it's, don't expect SimCity. It's not that, right? <laughs> uh, but what you're going to do is you're going to build things and repair buildings in town. So one of the initial things the game will give you within the first 10 minutes is your own village. And you're, oh, nice. uh, you're set up to then 
develop that village in a certain way. So you'll only at the start have access to one building. Right. Uh, but what you can put in there is like a supply cache. Now, adding supply caches or tailoring the buildings to different things will give you different overall bonuses. So you might get a good leadership standing or you might get a good provisioner if you're feeding a lot of cool. people. Cool. Which will then give you all these extra stats. And this is where I'm saying the depth of the game comes from in building your party and building your settlements to provide you with these overall buffs that focus in certain directions. Nice. And seeing what that does for you. So do these... Um Garrison, should we call them? Can you get actual <laughs> material items from them, or is it just stats? <laughs> Thank you for bringing that up, Andy. <laughs> uh, yes, once you build a supply cache, these built these areas will generate resources for you. That if you visit once a day, you can pick up something out of your village. Yeah, I'm, I'm, f I'm familiar with the mechanic. <laughs> I'm familiar with the mechanic. <laughs> yeah, you will get to do that. But uh, you can also do things like put up um, visual things. So I built like a sword stand. And oh, that nice. gave me overall, overall accuracy for my character. because I Oh, that. shit, yeah, that's you, pretty cool. Yeah, so you can put up these designs and stuff like that, too. They're more cosmetic than anything else, but you can add that to it. Um, that's pretty much it for the gameplay. There's not much else that I found in, like, the couple of hours of playing. And the pros of this is there's loads of customization. If you're really into these type of games and you like messing around with stats just to see what will happen... You're probably going to have a lot of fun. Like, yeah. I managed to get my character to be like, un he, can he can't ever miss, and he always crits. And, you know, setting it up like that. Yeah. I have a tank in my party. He just never takes damage because he's a fucking beast. <laughs> if you like messing around with that and playing with things like influence over other people, then you're probably going to have a really good time with this. The cons are it doesn't play particularly well. And nothing ever really particularly interesting happened. Nothing stand out in what you played so yeah, far. Yeah, there was no moment while I was playing it was like, that was cool. Yeah. It was like, oh, that's a cool idea. Nothing much developed out of that. See, with an RPG of this kind of retro feel, you, you expect the story to step up a little bit because of how the mechanics of your gameplay works. But if you're that far into it and nothing's happened yet, that's always a sign for yeah, me to say like that it's maybe... it's not really going to happen. Yeah, like, it's either like taking to too long. Give some indication in the first couple of hours that something cool's coming. So you're not getting Chrono Trigger here. You're not getting the old Final Fantasies here. You're not getting any of those things where something really badass can happen. Yeah. Probably not. That's a shame. So if you like it, it's going to be that you like messing around with stats, and you like messing around with gear, and you like outfitting your team to be badass and collecting all the followers and doing all that stuff. You're probably going to have some fun here, but don't expect to be like mind blown by yeah. uh, its, its stuff. It's everything you've pretty much seen before. The base building's there, which is interesting, but again, it's more stat weights and stuff that it's adding to you. Yeah, that's a shame. So, how did you find that? What's a Kashi mate? Big sword, mate. Big yeah, it was sword. Alright. It was alright. Nothing. I was waiting for the thing. Where's the thing that mm. makes me go, this is it's like it's like a cheesecake with no topping. It's a cheesecake with no topping, is what I'm saying. This well you know the topping's there though when you get into it. It's like a cheesecake with a shit base. No, because you're this, going this through not, it, you're waiting for that delicious. You don't base understand and it's this because you don't like desserts with fruit on. But it's a cheesecake with no strawberries on it. It's a cheesecake with no chocolate on it. It's the it's the foundation, you know. Right. It's salt and pepper. Where's my oops? Is that foundation? Yeah. Where's so the my, base? Where's my oregano? Where's my cinnamon? That's what I was missing <laughs> out, you know. It was so just, what was it then? Just no impact. It just didn't, like it just didn't do one. that thing where it was like something cool's gonna happen, which is unfortunate. It was like it's it's got all the stuff there. The base building's like kind of interesting. The stats are really kind of interesting, but it's not like. And it's leading to this. Oh, the combat's not got that cool thing that happens. It's not right? stand out enough in that field for me to no, say, you play quite. this. So, but if you love RPGs, yeah, give it a go. All right, guys, so that was uh, Disgraced. Uh, please check out our live stream every weekday from about 8.30 a.m. UK time, where we'll be testing all, where we stream all the testing of the games. All right, guys, and also click up here to check our previous video, which was Planet Coaster. There's nothing up there, pal. Where is it? There's nothing up there, pal. After this, mate, there's going to be a little fade to black. Click Planet Coaster. Wait, ride camera. Oh, shit. You could do it.